He missed! He won't next time. Our blasters are useless against him. Hey, let's make the baby do the magic hand thing. Come on, baby. Do the magic hand thing. I'm out of ideas. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new video for The Mandalorian Season 2. Giancarlo Esposito, Moff Gideon himself, was at the TCAs recently and talked about what's going on during Season 2, revealed a whole bunch of plot details, so we'll do a top 10 WTF breakdown. If you're new to my channel, I'll be doing Mandalorian bonus videos until Season 2 episodes get here later this year. They're even almost done filming all the Season 2 episodes. They've been filming for a long time now, if you guys didn't realize. So obviously careful for spoilers for everything from season one if you haven't watched the season one episodes yet. But Giancarlo Esposito talked about everything from having flashbacks to the Great Purge with the Mandalorian character because he was on Mandalore during all that. The Darksaber, he talked about his evil machinations and his plans for the Baby Yoda character. He didn't call himself evil though. No great villain thinks of themselves as evil. But starting with number 10, we have to address George Lucas on set. So John Favreau was recently filming, I believe it was episode 5 or episode 6 of The Mandalorian. George Lucas visited the set again, just like he did during season 1 to see what they're up to. This time, because there's no great secret about the Baby Yoda character, he actually took a picture of George Lucas holding him, so Papa Bless. There's all these classic pictures of George Lucas with the Yoda puppet. He's so protective of it. He's basically Yoda's father within the context of making Star Wars. So think of him as the grandfather, or the godfather at least, of Baby Yoda. A lot of people have also asked if George Lucas, visiting the set so much and The Mandalorian blowing up so big, if George Lucas would ever come back to direct an episode of The Mandalorian. I don't know if he would ever direct a full episode because he's effectively in retirement, but there's always the possibility that George Lucas could direct some scenes during The Mandalorian. I don't know if he would ever want to do it a full episode, but if Jon Favreau ever reveals any details like that, of course I'll include it in one of my videos. Steven Spielberg, for instance, directed some of the scenes during the final fight between Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan during Star Wars Episode 3, so George Lucas might do something like that with The Mandalorian or one of the other Disney Plus series. They'll finish filming all the season two episodes in the next couple of weeks, by the end of February, basically. So we'll probably get the first big teaser trailer for The Mandalorian season two by the spring. But number nine, Giancarlo Esposito was at the TCAs this past week. He did this big interview talking about all these season two Mandalorian details. So of course, everyone was asking him, what is your plan for Baby Yoda? What does Moff Gideon want with him? What's going on with the Darksaber? Are you going to have any flashbacks with the Mandalorian character? The answer that he gave is kind of circuitous, so I'm just going to paraphrase him a little bit. He says, with someone who is advanced in a certain way, you could want to be their best friend or you could want to co-opt what's inside them to figure out how to make all of us a little better at humanity. So it's that power and control of a moth leader who is trying to put the universe back together. He's exaggerating a little bit when he talks about universe. Obviously, we're just talking about the one galaxy that most of the Star Wars stories take place in. He then references the character's history and why he knows all these things, why he knows about Baby Yoda, why he understands him in a way that the Mandalorian character doesn't yet. Like, you might think that you know how important he is, but you don't, I assure you, during that big scene in Episode 8. So number 8, he just confirms a couple big plot teasers and things that they set up during Season 1 in certain scenes, but never fully answered before the finale. There are a lot of hanging plot threads that they have to address during Season 2. One is the mysterious Dr. Purging and his ties to the cloning facility on Kamido. Two, their sampling of Baby Yoda's DNA in that bio bed in episode three before the Mando came back to save him. And then three, the fact that Moff Gideon still wants Baby Yoda alive in the finale. Like the bumbling scout trooper said, played by Adam Pally and Jason Sudeikis. Most people will just remember them as the Baby Yoda punchers. That big twist in the finale, though, was kind of interesting because during episode three, when the Mando was rescuing Baby Yoda, Dr. Pershing claimed that he's the only reason that he's still alive. He'd be dead if it weren't for me. I've been trying to save him. Why then was it so important that Moff Gideon get Baby Yoda back alive in the finale? It probably has something to do with the viability of the cloning process, but I'll talk about that in a second. Number seven, the really funny thing, though, that Adam Pally told about this scene when they were filming it with the Baby Yoda character, he said in the very first take, he punched Baby Yoda so hard that John Favreau on set called Cut walked over to him very calmly and said, you know, I know we have to do this scene. You're supposed to punch the puppet there, but I just want to let you know that that puppet cost $5 million. Just want to let you know that before we start doing more takes. 
Most people watching that scene weren't thinking about that. They're just really upset that he was punching Baby Yoda. How dare you punch Baby Yoda? But in real life, that tiny little puppet that they used for Baby Yoda really did cost $5 million. So John Favreau was just telling him, please don't break the prop because it'll cost a ton of money to make another one. But number six, all the things that Giancarlo Esposito is saying just confirms a lot of our suspicions that not only does he want to use Baby Yoda's DNA and cloning techniques to create an army of super clones that are force sensitive, like an army of clone inquisitors, he also wants to continue using Baby Yoda himself, twisting him to his purpose, the same way that the Emperor wanted to use Anakin Skywalker and then tried to use Luke Skywalker and even Rey during the new trilogy. The reason why everyone is so hot on clones after the events of the original trilogy is that by the time of A New Hope, most of the clone army had died off. There were still some clones running around, and Commander Cody, for instance, is still kind of left in this ambiguous state. You don't know if he's alive, if he's dead, so presumably he's still running around the galaxy somewhere. But during the course of the original trilogy, and then even through the events of the new trilogy, most of the troops you see walking around, the Stormtroopers, the First Order Troopers, and then the Red Sith Troopers, are all made up of normal people. Now they get those people from different places, but after the events of the original trilogy, you have a lot of people wanting to go back to using clones for their armies just because they're so much easier to program and control. So Moff Gideon just wants a very controllable army of Force-sensitive warriors that he can send around the galaxy. They kind of did that during the Clone Wars animated series where Emperor Palpatine was trying to steal the Force-sensitive children of Jedi and twist them to the dark side to raise them to be Inquisitors. So number five, when Moff Gideon says he's quote-unquote putting the galaxy or the universe back together after the fall of the Empire, He's on the same kind of bend that Darth Vader was on. I have a very strong idea of what order looks like, and I'm going to bring my order to the chaos that is the galaxy right now. And even though we only got a glimpse of the New Republic during the course of Season 1, remember, during Episode 6, they're on the prison ship that belongs to the New Republic, Matt Lanter, who was the voice of Anakin Skywalker on Clone Wars, played that trooper. Right now, while this is all going on in The Mandalorian, you have Leia and the other rebellion leaders trying to form the New Republic. It's still in its very early stages, and you have a slightly older Luke Skywalker spending most of his time flying around the galaxy trying to stamp out the remnants of the Empire and the new warlords that rose up in their absence. People like Moff Gideon all over the galaxy. Remember, the Mandalorian series takes place in a relatively small sector of the galaxy. So even though Moff Gideon seems like a really big figure, you're really only talking about a small piece of this giant puzzle, which is number four, the main reason why Luke Skywalker isn't anywhere near this stuff, but you haven't seen him on the series yet. Mostly because they don't want to recast an adult Luke Skywalker right now. But within the logic of the story, Luke is so busy on the other side of the galaxy, and it's a huge galaxy, he just hasn't heard anything about a baby Yoda running around force choking people. Yet. There's nothing in any of the story that they've created for the Star Wars Expanded Universe, the new Expanded Universe, that says anything about Luke Skywalker's contact with the Baby Yoda character. Not because they don't want us to know, just because they literally have not written that story yet. And Jon Favreau was so secretive about the Baby Yoda character when they created it for the Mandalorian series. Number three, Giancarlo Esposito also talked about the history of the Darksaber because it was a really big deal that he got to use it during the finale. He said that he didn't realize that he was going to get to use it till right before they filmed that scene. But he confirmed where he acquired it, when he acquired it. It was on Mandalore during the Great Purge, which is also when he learned everything about these main characters. He says all these things about their backstories, revealing that he knows a lot of their secrets. They don't realize what's going on until the Mandalorian remembers that he was on Mandalore before the Great Purge as an Imperial Security Bureau officer. So Giancarlo Esposito just clarified that it's not that he knows everything about everyone. It's just that he has access to the Mandalorian's database and informational archives that he collected during that period of the Great Purge. That's also when he came into possession of the Darksaber. You have to remember that the branch of the military that he belonged to is mostly tasked with internal security and information gathering, literally combing through other people's databases. So that's what he would have done when they started occupying Mandalore. So cut to present day, he just has access to all these informational archives and was able to research these people when they found out who it was stole Baby Yoda. Oh, it was a Mandalorian. Which Mandalorian? Okay, let's look him up in the computer. In reality, the Mandalorian, Grief Karga, Cara Dune aren't people that he would normally care about. Like, he wasn't tracking them until they got involved with Baby Yoda. Number two, a really good example of what Moff Gideon would have been doing was during Rogue One when they go to Scarif to steal the Death Star plans. The facility is an ISB facility where Moff Gideon would have had regular access, where they store a lot of their secret information. 
Remember one of the secret plans they find while they're looking for the Death Star plans is Project Black Saber? Just to be clear, Black Saber isn't the same thing as the Dark Saber. Black Saber was a secret project that the Emperor commissioned, but was meant to be part of a future movie plot that never panned out, so maybe they'll decide to bring back that quote unquote Black Saber Easter egg in a future Disney Plus series. But number one, the other big characters. So there's a lot of talk of Sabine Wren, Bo-Katan Kryze, Tamura Morrison coming back as one of the clones, or Commander Cody, he just happens to be the biggest clone. Maybe even Ahsoka Tano, and even Aiden Versio, the character played by Jaina Gankovar during the Battlefront series. Because she was asked recently too on Twitter, like, are you coming back for this? So all these people that have played characters during the Clone Wars, during Star Wars Rebels, are all keen to come back and star during the series. But in terms of how many of them, I think that they'll actually include, just remember the amount of fan service that they did during season one. So episode five, probably the most fan service-y episode of The Mandalorian season one. They go to Tatooine, they do all the original trilogy and prequel shout outs. She has the high ground, it's no use. They tease Boba Fett, but they never really answer that. Of course, they're gonna follow up on that during season two. But just expect that level of fan service during season two. So maybe a couple episodes, maybe one or two characters from some of those original series. And anybody they don't include during season two, remember The Mandalorian will probably run for at least four or five seasons. And there are the other Disney Plus series like the Obi-Wan series. Now there's even a rumored Knights of the Old Republic Disney Plus series, even though that'd be set thousands of years in the past and be a completely different group of characters. But let me know in the comments, what kind of flashbacks do you want to see during season two? Do you want to see some Baby Yoda flashbacks? I don't think they'll explain everything about his character, but maybe a couple of things that'll give you an idea for where he came from. And just a reminder that the Clone Wars season seven episodes are gonna start February 17th. But congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big Star Wars video, Tevya Smolka. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everyone click here for all my Mandalorian season two episodes and videos and click here to watch Ezra Miller's flash crossover with Grant Gustin's flash. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you.